He's the most rogue robot I've ever seen. Stealing cars on the street. Wearing a big gold chain and swearing. He calls the gang members daddy. And this is the artificial intelligence. Chappie. Not only can he skillfully use nunchucks, but with a light kick, he can knock down a wall. He can also throw darts with perfect accuracy, hitting the target every time. Once Chappie had impressive combat skills, the next step was to modify his appearance. All it took was some cool tattoos and a bunch of gold chains. Then, with a swaggering walk, the world's first thug robot was born. Not long ago, Chappie was a robot police officer. How did he end up like this? In Johannesburg, South Africa, there are over 300 violent incidents every day. Police and criminals could clash at any moment, making injuries and deaths among officers commonplace. To combat the increasingly rampant criminals, the government introduced a new type of robot called Scouts. They would replace police officers in all dangerous tasks. Scouts have an incredibly strong learning ability. Not only can they skillfully use various weapons, but they can also execute any command quickly and precisely. With the formation of an all-robot police force, Johannesburg finally regained its long-lost order. During routine law enforcement, scouts would sometimes sustain damage. At those times, all that was needed was to replace the faulty parts, and the scouts could immediately resume their duties. They patrolled around the clock, 24-hour patrols, forcing once active criminals to lay low. Ninja is the leader of a small organization, often helping local gangs with drug transport. But this time, with the scouts on their tails, all the drugs he was transporting were destroyed. Facing this outcome, gang leader Hippo demanded Ninja to compensate him. The amount he asked for was astronomical, and Ninja tried to negotiate. But Hippo pulled out a weapon, giving Ninja only seven days to prepare. If he didn't see the compensation by then, he would kill all of Ninja's crew. Just as Hippo was being arrogant, the scouts caught up to them. Everyone scattered upon seeing this. They had found some ways to deal with the scouts through previous encounters. With a loud explosion, thick smoke billowed up temporarily blocking the scouts' vision. Unable to identify targets specifically, the scouts had to land to fight. Some criminals tried to fight back, but they were easily taken down by the scouts. Seeing the area was temporarily safe, human officers began to land and fight. The scouts provided cover, with human officers quickly hiding behind the scouts, using their sturdy bodies as shields. Under their attack, the criminals had no chance to resist. Police rapidly pushed towards the gang's camp. Some criminals tried to ambush them, but their attacks were blocked by the scouts. Seeing the situation worsening, the scouts received orders to use lethal weapons. They successfully stormed into the camp, but as soon as one scout kicked open a door, Hippo ambushed them with a rocket launcher. A rocket hit Scout 22 square in the chest, disabling the robot instantly. Seeing this, the remaining officers didn't dare to move rashly, as they called for backup. Ninja seized the opportunity to escape in a car. After this battle, this marked the 30th large criminal gang taken down by the scouts. As the company that developed the robots, Tetravail stock prices soared. To prevent scout robots from being hacked, Tetravail used an unbreakable key system, making them the only ones who could alter the scouts' programming. As the designer of the scout robots, Dion had a bright future ahead, but he aimed higher. Dion wanted to create a robot with emotions and thoughts. His research in artificial intelligence had succeeded. Excited, Dion went to his boss, requesting a scout robot for testing, but his boss rejected the request, stating that as a publicly traded weapons company, they needed robots that would follow orders without question. Undeterred, Dion secretly took the damaged Scout 22 from the last battle and the key to alter its programming. However, just as he left the company, a group intercepted him. It was Ninja's crew. Before Dion could react, Ninja knocked him out. After the battle, Ninja quickly received a call from Hippo, who knew Ninja's base location. If he didn't get the compensation in a week, he would destroy the base with his men. Facing this threat, Ninja's only option was to rob an armored car, but they would inevitably encounter the scouts, and Yolandi thought of a plan. The scout robot should also have a remote control like other machines to turn them on and off. As long as they can find this remote control, these robot police will no longer attack them, which is why they kidnapped Dion. When Dion heard their naive idea, he explained the working principle of the scouts. These robots come with firmware locks from the factory, and they will remain on unless they run out of power. So, there is no way to stop the scouts from operating. Seeing that they didn't get what they wanted, Ninja was ready to beat up Dion. Luckily, at that moment, another teammate, America, arrived. He found the damaged Scout 22 in Dion's car, and it was obviously powered off. So, Yolandi came up with another idea, demanding Dion to reprogram the robot. If they had a robot to work for them, they could do anything they wanted in the future. Under the threat of death, 
Dion ultimately chose to compromise, deciding to use this opportunity to implant his latest artificial intelligence into Scout-22. Dion first reattached the robot's arm, as Scout-22 was severely damaged in the previous battle, and its battery had fused with the chassis. This meant Scout-22 could no longer replace its battery, and it only had enough power for five days. When the time runs out, Scout-22 will lose its ability to function. Dion then opened the Scout's control program, with the security key inserted. He could now modify the Scout's program. Once everything was ready, Dion immediately implanted the latest artificial intelligence into Scout-22. After waiting, Scout-22 finally rebooted. Everyone watched nervously. However, the newly awakened robot panicked and hid when it saw so many people watching it. The robot's mind was like that of a newborn human baby. Although intelligent, it couldn't do anything yet and didn't even understand the most basic language. Seeing Ninja's aggressive demeanor frightened the robot. Yolandi immediately stepped in to calm it down, calling to Scout-22 gently. Sensing her goodwill, it cautiously came out. Scout-22 then began trying to interact with humans, first looking curiously at Dion's watch. Seeing this, Dion began to teach and Scout-22 quickly learned the word watch. This made Dion overjoyed. Seeing Scout-22 so smart, Yolandi introduced herself. Scout-22 quickly remembered Yolandi's name, then looked at Dion, knowing he was its creator. After learning Dion's name, Scout-22 happily played with its toy, seeing it was as innocent as a child. Yolandi, overflowing with maternal love, named it Chappie, just as Chappie was happy to have a name. Ninja returned and drove Dion away. Ninja's goal was to use the robot for robbery, not to let Dion research artificial intelligence. The next day, Ninja took Chappie outside. He wanted to teach Chappie how to use weapons, but the gunfire scared Chappie, making it retreat in fear. Ninja ignored this, forcibly placing the weapon in Chappie's hands. Under Ninja's pressure, Chappie began to shoot randomly. The bullets missed, and a frightened Chappie dropped the weapon. Yolandi soon arrived. Displeased with Ninja's actions, Dion was the one who understood artificial intelligence best and could teach Chappie properly. Meanwhile, Dion was researching online. He planned to use methods for educating human children to train Chappie, but as he left the company, someone was secretly following him. Before the Scout robots, Tetra Vale had another robot project. Vincent was in charge of this project and was a staunch opponent of artificial intelligence. He believed robots controlled by humans were the strongest. He designed a helmet that could connect to the human brain, allowing the wearer to control the robot. But the police were uninterested in his robots, needing something for urban crime, not a heavily armed platform. His robots were expensive, bulky, and lacked the versatility of the scouts. Seeing his plan fail, Vincent turned his attention to the scouts. When he tried to steal the key to control the scouts, he found it was gone. He discovered through the system that the key was always inserted in Scout 22. This violated company rules, so he secretly followed Dion to see what he was up to. Meanwhile, under Yolandi's guidance, Chappie learned to mimic human speech. Chappie demonstrated incredible learning ability. He can't talk, he's smart. No, he can't talk smart. Oh, what? Are you oh my god, me? look he's copying oh. me. Chappie, oh. Chappie, say mommy. Say mommy. <laughs> when Dion arrived, he was delighted by Chappie's progress, but Chappie's speech and actions now mirrored those of the gang members. This immediately made Dion very worried and angry. So he demanded as Chappie's creator that Chappie promise never to commit any crimes. After receiving Chappie's affirmative response, Dion began training Chappie's cognitive abilities. This time, he not only brought Chappie storybooks but also took him outside to draw. However, they didn't know that Vincent had been watching everything. Under Chappie's brush, he quickly drew the car in front of him. Just as Dion felt happy about this, Ninja arrived. He immediately started beating Dion, stating he needed a killing machine, not a robot for drawing and storytelling. After saying this, he drove Dion away and turned to Chappie. With less and less time left from Hippo's ultimatum, Ninja decided to train Chappie his way, to show Chappie the world's cruelty. Ninja took him to a place where bad guys were active. Faced with the sudden appearance of the scout robot, the bad guys scattered in fear. But after Ninja drove away, they noticed Chappie seemed different from the police robots. Their courage grew. They first threw stones at Chappie. Seeing no resistance, they became more aggressive. One bad guy knocked Chappie to the ground. Chappie, naive and confused, couldn't understand why they were attacking him for no reason. Now, Chappie just wanted to escape. But soon another person came over. He threw a Molotov cocktail at Chappie. Terrified, Chappie fled the place immediately. As Chappie ran in a panic, he quickly returned to the city's edge. But Chappie didn't rush home. The day's events left him deeply scared. While resting on a rock, a stray dog approached from a distance. Seeing this small, weak creature, he couldn't help but gently touch it with his hand. It was a feeling Chappie had never experienced. 
but he didn't know a crisis was looming. After learning about Dion's plan, Vincent quickly tracked Chappie using the location system, immersed in his own world. Chappie didn't notice Vincent approaching from behind with weapons designed for scouts. Chappie was incapacitated by Vincent's attack. When Chappie's program rebooted, he was already in Vincent's car. Vincent intended to extract the key from Chappie, but when Chappie tried to resist, Vincent cut off one of his arms, leaving Chappie powerless. After obtaining the key, Vincent found Chappie useless. To prevent exposure, Vincent decided to destroy Chappie completely. However, in fear of death, Chappie suddenly unleashed unprecedented strength. He threw off the two men restraining him. Chappie opened the car door and jumped out of the speeding vehicle. The men fired at him, but the bullets couldn't penetrate Chappie's armor. Chappie quickly disappeared into the darkness, using his location system. Chappie soon returned to Ninja's base. Seeing Chappie's condition, Yolandi rushed to him. Yolandi angrily questioned Ninja. What happened? My arm is gone. This is a child! How could you do this? How? I didn't know this would happen. I don't even know what happened. But Ninja didn't know what Chappie had gone through. Seeing Chappie's injuries, Yolandi had America fetch Dion's supplies. With simple replacements, Chappie soon had a new arm. After the day's events, a frightened Chappie insisted on staying with his mom. Yolandi took out the storybook Dion had given Chappie, which contained lessons Dion wanted to teach. That's what mommy loves. It's, it's special, like, like what's inside. That's what makes it different. You really are. Inside. Your soul. Mommy loves you. That night, Chappie seemed to understand many things. The next day, Ninja approached Chappie, admitted his mistakes, and sought Chappie's forgiveness. Ninja decided to be Chappie's dad and teach him to be brave and strong so no one would bully him again. Ninja first taught Chappie to walk with swagger. Cool it. Need to keep a gangster. Need to keep a gangster. Yeah. <laughs> be cool. Don't last on being cool. Even when you put a gun. Have to be cool like this. Boom. Then showed him how to use weapons stylishly. Chappie's learning ability was impressive. He mimicked Ninja's mannerisms perfectly. But when Ninja tried to teach Chappie to shoot, Chappie refused, remembering his promise to Dion never to commit crimes. When Ninja was about to scold Chappie, America stepped in. He had a way to make Chappie obey. Under America's guidance, Chappie quickly understood. If somebody really disrespects you. You can deal with them without using a gun. It's just stick a knife in, and they can relax and go to sleep. Seeing this method work, Ninja decided to teach Chappie to use melee weapons. First, they taught Chappie how to use darts, and once Chappie could hit the target every time, Ninja took out a pair of nunchucks from who knows where. Seeing that Chappie already had impressive combat abilities, Ninja then began to modify Chappie's appearance. He first sprayed cool tattoos on Chappie, then put a bunch of gold chains on him. Knowing that Chappie wouldn't commit any crimes, Ninja planned to use a test as an excuse to make Chappie help him with a robbery. So Ninja first took Chappie to the street, pointing at a car and telling Chappie that this person stole daddy's beloved car. Upon hearing this, Chappie's expression immediately changed. Chappie picked up a wrench and charged towards the car. The driver, seeing this, opened opened the window voluntarily. He thought Chappie was a police robot, but Chappie didn't explain anything and smashed the car with the wrench. The driver, still clueless about the situation, was stunned as Chappie punched through the window. Chappie's actions didn't stop there. After dragging the driver out and threatening him, he tossed him into the bushes. The situation surprised Ninja greatly, and he quickly called Chappie back to the car. The commotion Chappie caused was too big. They had to leave immediately. And Chappie had damaged the car so badly that even if they stole it, it wouldn't sell for a good price. So, following Daddy's suggestion, Chappie quickly found another target. This time, he didn't use violence. Chappie, posing as a police robot, ordered the woman out of the car. Before the lady realized what was happening, Chappie drove off with the car. With this method, Chappie quickly became skilled at carjacking. In just half a day, Ninja and Chappie had stolen several luxury cars. Ninja decided to sell these cars to a weapons dealer to exchange for a large amount of equipment for their next robbery plan. However, upon hearing this, Chappie immediately regained his composure. When they arrived at the gang's territory, Ninja and the others went to make the deal, leaving Chappie to keep watch. During this time, Chappie noticed a dead stray dog and cautiously reached out to touch it. It was the first time Chappie had seen a dead creature. He remembered his mom saying that all life goes to the next place after death. Ninja, seeing this, told Chappie about the harsh reality of the world. Upon hearing Chappie's words, You want to survive, Chappie? 
and Chappie must fight. I'm gonna live forever, daddy. What does that say there? Ninja pointed to Chappie's chest, where his battery was nearly depleted. Because of his previous injuries, Chappie couldn't replace his battery like other robots. Ninja told Chappie that once his battery ran out, he would die like the stray dog. The only way for Chappie to survive was to get a new body, which required money only obtainable through robbery. To stay alive, Chappie agreed to Ninja's robbery plan. But before they could act, Dion arrived at Ninja's base, this time with a gun, determined to take Chappie back at all costs. However, Chappie was no longer happy to see Dion. In response to Dion's questioning, Chappie finally voiced his doubts. If Dion created him, why give him a broken body? I want to live. I want to stay here with mommy. I don't want to die. Dion explained that Chappie's existence had exceeded his expectations. He never thought Chappie would evolve self-awareness. Meanwhile, Vincent made a crazy move after getting the key. To gain government attention for his research, he planned to implant a virus in all the scouts. As the software update succeeded, the scouts' control programs began malfunctioning. Robotic police on duty froze, allowing criminals to escape. Even police cars lost control and crashed. With the virus spreading, more robots were affected, all falling to the ground. Chappie was also affected, but luckily, Dion was nearby and diagnosed the problem as a central processor issue. The only way to save Chappie was to take him back to the company to reprogram him. Meanwhile, the news of the robot's paralysis reached Hippo. Seeing this rare opportunity, Hippo decided to wreak havoc. With gang incitement, city order quickly collapsed. Countless rioters and thugs took to the streets, smashing shops and cars. The city became a place of bloodshed and violence. Vincent, watching the news, was excited. Only in this chaos could his robots be needed. With the virus spreading, the remaining scouts also fell. Seeing this, the criminals became even bolder, attacking the fallen scouts. Under Vincent's relentless hacking, all the robot police were eventually taken offline. Seeing the once powerful robots now motionless, the criminals picked up torches, ready to burn all the scouts. Meanwhile, Dion had already brought Chappie back to the lab. He analyzed Chappie's program through the computer data. But Dion didn't have time to think. He immediately re started Chappie's control system. Under Dion's constant calls, Chappie's consciousness quickly reawakened. Dion, now calm, realized he was caught in a massive conspiracy and wanted to leave with Chappie. However, at that moment, Chappie noticed the giant robot in the lab. Dion explained that this was another robot called Moose. The helmet beside it was a neural transmitter that could read human thoughts. Since Moose didn't have the intelligent program like the scouts, it required human control. Upon hearing this, Chappie had a new idea. If his body couldn't change batteries, why not switch to a new body? But Dion told him that since Chappie had developed self-awareness, it couldn't be easily copied like data. No one knew the exact form of consciousness, so Chappie couldn't transfer his mind. Chappie didn't believe this and thought he could find a way to transfer his consciousness. Ignoring Dion's objections, Chappie took the neural transmitter and left quickly. Chappie returned to Ninja's base and began studying the neural transmitter. He connected his brain to the network to access all human knowledge. Chappie planned to organize this knowledge and find a way to extract his consciousness. After a night of research, Chappie successfully calculated his neural data. Seeing the constantly changing codes on the computer, he knew he had created a copy of himself. Now, Chappie just needed a new body to transfer his consciousness. Ninja's robbery plan was set in motion. After careful preparation, everyone was fully armed. For the first time, Ninja's team acted together, targeting an armored car to get enough money. After forcing the armored car to stop, America used a bomb to destroy the door. Chappie immediately moved in, dragging the security guard out and neutralizing him with a dart. With Chappie's help, Ninja's team easily completed the robbery. The news quickly spread through the city via television. People couldn't believe the robot police, symbols of justice, were committing crimes. Meanwhile, Dion, following computer clues, discovered the virus destroying the scouts was implanted through Vincent's computer. Just as he planned to confront Vincent, he saw the news about Chappie's robbery. Dion abandoned his plan to confront Vincent. He needed to stop Chappie. As Dion left the company, Vincent immediately found the boss. Vincent said the robbing scout robot was Dion's design. To restore order and protect the company, they had to act activate his moose robot. Vincent proposed to destroy Chappie and eliminate Dion. After some thought, the boss agreed to Vincent's plan. Vincent donned the control helmet and directed the moose robot towards Ninja's camp. Meanwhile, Ninja's team celebrated their successful heist. Chappie excitedly asked when he could get a new body. Ninja then revealed he couldn't get a mechanical body, he had lied to Chappie to get his help for the robbery. Feeling betrayed, Chappie angrily grabbed Ninja. Returning to the base, Chappie dragged Ninja out of the car. Seeing Chappie's unstable emotions, Yolandi got out to intervene. At that moment, Dion arrived, urging Chappie to stay calm as the Moose robot was coming. Dion offered the weapons he brought from the company to help Chappie fight Moose. But Chappie chose to give up resisting. No deal. I'm gone anyways. I'm gone, mommy. No, Chappie, no! 
As everyone felt disheartened, two more cars arrived. Ninja recognized Hippo's convoy, coming to take Ninja's money and kill everyone, including taking Chappie to serve him. Provoked by Hippo, Ninja couldn't hold back and attacked first. The battle erupted, with Ninja's initial attack forcing the gang members to retreat temporarily. But the gang had overwhelming numbers, and Ninja's team soon fell behind. As the gang prepared to launch a full assault, a deafening roar suddenly came from the sky. A massive robot then descended upon the scene. Under Vincent's control, the Moose robot finally arrived at the battlefield. America tried to fight back, but bullets couldn't harm Moose at all. As the robot approached, it stomped on America's chest. Moose then extended a pair of mechanical shears. With a horrifying scream, America was torn in half. Moose's assault wasn't over, now everyone here was his target. Vincent used a large-scale weapon, and with a massive explosion, Ninja's base was obliterated. Seeing that no one could resist Moose's attack, Vincent grew increasingly excited. He then deployed a rapid missile. typically used only in wars. When the explosion finally ceased, Vincent smiled maniacally. Moose landed again, ready to exterminate everyone. At the critical moment, Chappie emerged, fully armed. He leaped at Moose, but his attacks did no damage. Chappie didn't give up. Once he landed, he used the weapons Dion provided. The powerful blasts forced Moose to retreat. Under Chappie's assault, Moose's weapon systems were destroyed, but Chappie had another trick. He had attached a bomb to a dagger, but as he tried to detonate it, Moose flung Chappie away. Chappie crashed to the ground, dropping the detonator. Fortunately, the gang members attacked, diverting Moose's attention. In the chaos, Ninja accidentally shot Moose's monitor, leaving Vincent without vision. To avoid damage, Vincent had Moose ascend. With Moose gone, Hippo resumed his assault. He shot Ninja's leg, and when Dion tried to flee, he was also shot. Though Ninja fought back, taking down Hippo, Dion lay gravely injured. Chappie rushed to help Dion. Vincent activated his backup infrared vision, and Moose charged back. Ninja made a decision, telling Chappie to take Mom and Dion and leave while he held off Moose. As Moose was about to kill Ninja, Yolandi returned. She picked up Chappie's dropped weapon and shot Moose. This exposed her location, and Moose retaliated, hitting her in the chest. Seeing his mother fall, Chappie, in a rage, spotted the detonator. Vincent noticed and fired at the detonator. Chappie, braving the gunfire, grabbed the detonator and triggered it, blowing Moose to pieces. Though his mother was dead, Chappie needed to save Dion. He took Dion to the company headquarters. Vincent attacked as they entered the lab. Chappie recognized Vincent as the one who had cut off his arm. Chappie charged at Vincent, whose attacks failed to harm him. Vincent soon lay motionless under Chappie's furious assault. Chappie returned to Dion, whose body was failing. Ignoring Dion's protests, Chappie placed the neural transmitter on him. Chappie initiated the program, transferring Dion's consciousness into a mechanical body. When Dion woke, he was amazed at Chappie's success. But Chappie's battery was nearly dead. As he prepared to say goodbye, Dion had an idea. Vincent's computer still held the key to control the scouts. They could remotely shut down a scout and transfer Chappie's consciousness into it. Chappie donned the consciousness helmet, and Dion hit confirm. Chappie's body went limp as his consciousness transferred. Dion quickly located Chappie's new body. A robot stood up behind him, now housing Chappie's consciousness. Chappie had a new lease on life, but their return to the base was bittersweet without Yolandi. The story didn't end there. The night Chappie researched consciousness transfer, he had copied Yolandi's consciousness. Now, under Chappie's control, he would give his mother a new body too. I'm a movie lover. Welcome to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.